Hello and welcome back to Prodigal Overland. In this episode, we're going to be out tackling the hardest trail out at Uwari National Forest, Daniel. Utterly sad. This is the first time I have seen Brad not take an obstacle. I don't know where the fear is coming from. It's never been there before, but here it is today, folks. Here it is today. So he wanted to document this moment because he was scared that I wouldn't admit to the world that Jeff Samurai is the best. Is the best. Can you see how far I can go? Yeah, keep going. You gotta turn back this way, yeah. What you worried about, buddy? You're getting a little light. You're getting a little light in the front. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna need to lay the groundwork just a little bit on this next clip, this next obstacle. What you're seeing here is uh, a trail out at Uari called Daniel. It's the hardest trail out at Uari, although this is not the hardest section of that trail. That will come later. However, we got to this section here by coming at the backside of Daniel, which tends to be a little bit more beginner friendly. Um, there's some fun little obstacles. Um, I'm going to show you here in a second of just how we, there's a section where you can pull over to the side and just kind of play around. We did that earlier um before we got to this point but when we're at this point we were just kind of scoping lines we were almost off daniel but we i knew we i i knew we had the hardest section to go yet and we were kind of checking in with our group to see if people were comfortable doing that we specifically focus um on bringing people out that are new so if you're watching our videos and you're like why are they going so slow or they should just do this like you got to remember that that we are taking folks out that sometimes it's the first time they've ever been out off-road now this group had been out with us several times um so everybody who's seen this video i think had been out with us three or four times so we're getting into things like actually allowing them to spot my vehicle um, allowing them to pick the lines and you're gonna see rich here in a second kind of help me up through this section in the beginning um it did get to a point where it gets a little wonky we'll get to that in a second Oh, that's your dad. Hold on. Oh. Okay, this section here is interesting because it's a real world application of how the pedal commander works. I know I've talked about the pedal commander. If you've not seen any of those videos before, the pedal commander is a throttle modulation system. Um, and you can really dial in the sensitivity of your accelerator. You can take it way back. You can kind of tune it up to allow um, more gas or less gas to get into your engine um, with the same press of the pedal. Usually when I'm out off-road, I'm in eco mode. It's good for rock crawling. It delays the throttle. Everything's nice and slow. I'm going to be in a situation here where I actually need to do a bump. Okay. And you're going to see the first time I try this bump, it doesn't work out so well. That's good. Now give it a little bump. You just need a little bump for that back tire. So it's my back that's caught? Yep. Straight up. As soon as you feel your rear lift, go hard driver. Do it again. A little more passenger next time. 
Now, obviously you can't tell from the video what's going on in the inside, but the reason I wasn't able to kind of rev up and get enough acceleration is because I was still in eco mode on my throttle. Now, what you're gonna see here in a second is I'm going to adjust, well, you won't see it, but inside the vehicle, I'm turning it to sport mode. And so watch what happens, I'm doing the exact same thing. Both times I held the brake, got on the accelerator, let off, let off the brake to try to get a thump. First time you saw that didn't really do much, didn't get anywhere. Now watch what happens when I put it in sport mode. Go forward. Yeah, you're gonna bump it. But you're coming forward right now. Hey. I had to hop the thing, man. Oh, you're fine. That was a bump. The lock is going to come up on your right passenger. So at this point, inside, my dash is telling me I'm about 30 degrees off pitch, which is probably the most I've been sideways in a vehicle. Um, and so I'm just trying to figure out, like, am I going to start leveling out soon? And I really wasn't getting that. Um, I couldn't see anything from inside. All I saw was that my front end kept going up. In situations like this, it's it's really good to have good communication worked out between you and your spotter. Jeff and I are still working that out, and he's trying to tell me one thing. I'm looking for different information from him. So it took us a while to kind of figure this one out. I need a tree strap. Hey Jeff, you want to take that line up? In retrospect, I, I think I would have either gotten out or had someone shoot a video just to kind of show me what was going on so I could get a better sense of what it looked yeah, like yeah. from the front. Uh, I didn't want to get out of the vehicle with it pitched the way it was. This really does highlight like a, a, a good lesson here is that you never want to rush through things when you're not sure of where you're going. My spotters weren't feeling 100% confident about what they were telling me, or I wasn't feeling confident about the information they were giving me. So it's better to go slow in situations like this than it is to just press forward and have something bad happen. Oh, no, you're already 
This section here was actually earlier in the day. This is on the backside of Daniel. When I had talked about um, just having, having the folks with us practice spotting, this is the area they were doing it. There's a nice little rock crawling area. This is Phil trying to spot his buddy Nathan up through, through this in, in actually Phil's vehicle. Watch, man, he's gonna slide back. And we said once you get past that obstacle, then just drive. Oh, just drive. That was it's not the, like I gave up. That was the instruction. Yeah. Just we, drive. Once you get past it. We had already talked about it beforehand. So. so, so it was it was like the pre-spot spot. Yeah, but he didn't. Yeah, but he didn't do a thing I said. He didn't listen to you. And you say he was the spotter. I would think with the hat. <laughs> The hat would command it's authority, authority, right? I, I would so. think. Especially, yeah. look how you're standing, man. You look like you could be a Western film. I thought so. Yeah. But, uh, he did not listen. That's that's him, though. That's Nathan. Nathan yeah. ain't gonna listen to you. He's not gonna listen to you. In fact, he told me, "You tell me to do something, I'll do it." Uh, I no. knew I had. Yeah, I knew I'd forgotten some of the advantages of you. You, you know, in your pre-calls, you ask, "What do you want to learn?" Right. And um, you know, there was a time in my life I felt like I've learned everything I want to learn. I don't care to learn anymore. Yeah, I get kind of lazy. <laughs> So we had those conversations. There's been some things we've talked about, and one of them this time was I know I'm not a great spotter, and um, so you you kind of push us outside that outside that comfort zone. Say, so man, you wanted to learn this. Here's your opportunity. Yeah. And so we talked about it. And I was like, well, you know, um, Brad, you know, I've, I, uh, at this point, he, my, my my driver's not following my my instructions. Did you tell Nathan that? No, I didn't. He was giving you crap, man. I Did said, you hear it? I said, I said, I he's like. Over. He's like, my driver's not listening to me. Said, I'm like, I, wait a second. Is, well, do you know what he's, <laughs> yeah, that, he said, he said, well, you're not talking to him. I walked over, <laughs> walked over to Brad and I said, my, my driver's not, not listening and, and I'm outside, I'm comfortable. And I said, what I'm comfortable with right now is just get in the car and, and drive. He said, yeah, I saw you do that with Cullen too, but what are you going to learn? And so I said, okay, all right, let's try it again. So that's good. I mean, he, he um, wants you to learn. Jeff's oldest son had been begging and begging all day to drive a little bit, and here Jeff is trying to coax him through this section. Spot him a little bit here. Stop, stop. Driver. Come straight. Give me more driver. I know 
You're committed at this point, go over, go over it. But I mean, you're pretty much, yeah, I would just go, go straight. straight. <clears throat> so we'll keep my left, left tire right there in my gap. Here, yeah. Good job, bud, you got it. Good passenger, you got it. Yeah, buddy. Hey, man, so the, uh, one thing I saw, okay. Hey, real quick, take a peek out your door, look at your rear tire. Uh, yeah. This, you just look out your window. This is not how you want to stop. Want to stop right here. You want to move forward and put that tire on this side of that as a chalk. There you go, buddy. There we go, that's where we stop them. We actually made it through most of the day, um, not having gotten to the worst part of Daniel, which is the front side. There's a, the gatekeeper section. Um, so actually, towards the end of the day, here we are. Um, Phil, um, Jeff, and I actually hit the front side of Daniel just to see what that was all about. And Jeff was all about trying it first, and I was all about letting it. So in general, I find I have a strong dislike for obstacles where you look at it and you know exactly there's only one way this is going down. And this one in particular, the second half of this, it just lays you on your side. And so I knew looking at that thing, and especially because I don't have wheels that are offset, knowing that I'm just gonna be riding my fenders, front, back, maybe a little door, a little side mirror. So. I'm looking at this, watching Jeff do it, and I'm thinking, I'm not sure I want this. You gotta cut it back towards the wall, man. Use the wall. Just give it a little bump.
Okay, so Jeff very easily, without much struggle at all, made it up the gatekeeper and Daniel. Section here where you're into the wall, he, with some diff, right here, it was really this mud. No, it was a gas can. No, right you, there. oh, all right, his gas can. You got too much gas. Mr. Brown, you haven't done it. But he got it. He got it. And after watching Jeff, after watching this guy do it, I have decided that I'm not taking my gladiator up there. How does that make you feel, Jeff? Sad. Utterly sad. This is the first time I've seen Brad not take an obstacle. I don't know where the fear is coming from. It's never been there before. But here it is today, folks. Here it is today. So he wanted to document this moment because he was scared that I wouldn't admit to the world that Jeff Samurai is the best. Is the best. <laughs> and Brad, thank you. What's that, Nikki? What's up, little girl? Oh. What'd you think? I'll tell you what, that was not fun. No? no. What do you mean? All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you like seeing this samurai, you're gonna see him a lot more. Jeff has come on to kind of help us with our events. Uh, like I said, we're kind of working the bugs out with his ride, with our communication, but um, just a great guy. And um, man, I love you.